I guess I'm not real well versed in what you pond guys all do. I, I don't know your needs and, and um, we can do this together to find out how the law is actually going to pertain to what you need and what you're looking for. But I was asked to come and, and speak today about um, the actual law as it pertains to muskrats and the taking of muskrats. So if you have any questions, let me know. We'll discuss it. I'll try the best I can to answer the question. There's still some still here. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm sure many of you do know that muskrats, uh, according to the law, are protected wild animals. And what that means is when an animal is protected, it's afforded some protection by law to say that it probably has a season and an allowed method of take. And if something has an allowed method of take, that means it also has a prohibited method of take. If it, if it doesn't say you can, you can't. So, go ahead. Um, that's the actual law that starts us off. And this, in, in, when I talk today, the law kind of, there's some twists and turns in here, but I think we'll get to the final result. And I, I, I hope you understand what I want you to understand about the law, but to start out, that's the law that says uh, muskrats are protected by law, okay? Um, according to definition in the Minnesota State Statute under 97A, um, subdivision 45 definitions, muskrats are included in small game, and, and small game is uh, considered a protected, they are protected wild animals. Um, so, they are protected, that means they do have a season on them. And um, the seasons uh, in, in law are typically the tail end of October through the last day of February. So, muskrat season just ended. Um, it's a little bit earlier, uh, north of, I think it's Highway a little north of us here, uh, north of 210. <coughs> and a week later here. So the law does say there is a time that muskrats can be taken, and that's what it is. Um, it also says in the law, because they're protected, you need to have a license to take them. Um, you would need a small game license and a trapping license if you're gonna take them by trapping. Actually, that's the only way you can take them is by trapping, but we'll get further into that. Now there is, so that's the law, okay, that's what the law says. We have protected muskrats uh, with a season and a license requirement. <coughs> However, there is an exception to that law. And that exception is in 97B, and it says a person may take, and it's not just muskrats, I kind of removed some of the other ones just so I didn't get too much information up there, but it does specifically say muskrats um, on land owned or occupied um, by, a, by the person where the animal is doing the damage. The key to that are the words in yellow, owned or occupied. Now, I'm guessing how many of you, and, and I don't know the answer to this, how many of these ponds are we talking about are on private property? Are they all municipal, city, county, state? So they're all public property owned by the city. And before I did this, this slideshow, I, I, I sent the questions down to 500 Lafayette St. Paul, the UNR headquarters. And the statewide consensus, so this, is, this pertains to everyone, no matter where you are in the state. The city-owned or county-owned or state-owned property, this does not apply to that. This exception does not apply. Because the law is specific to owned or occupied. So because it's city-owned property, we don't necessarily have the owner or the occupant to take care of the problem. So this is going to pertain to private property, this law. Does that make sense? 
Okay, so we do have an exception, however, it doesn't apply to, I think, what you're thinking with, with, this, with this problem with muskrats, okay? If someone chooses to use this exception, give me one second, say on private property, you can take the muskrat out of season and without a license because it is doing damage on private property. I need to meet the conditions that the law set forth in that, in, in meaning that I cannot use poison or artificial lights. Any other method is okay, as long as I don't do that. And then I need to report the taking of the muskrats to a CO, a conservation officer, or the DNR wildlife within 24 hours. So that's what I need to do if I'm gonna claim that exception and take those rats on private land. We have a question. Please repeat the question, the Tony. The question is, can we be not included in that because this is not open to public, so the, the public does not have the right to come in and use the ponds. I can't come in and, and throw my canoe, in, canoe around on the pond. I can't come in and uh, duck hunt in the pond. So the question was, if it's not open to the public, can we still maybe claim that exception? And the answer is no. Okay? It's, remember, I don't write the laws. The DNR doesn't have anything to do with writing the laws. We enforce, or I enforce that. It falls down to the two not words even. again that were in yellow. Like I hardly have any owner answer. or occupant. And under the city, city property, we don't have an owner. Okay, it belongs to the city, so we don't have an owner that can go out and, and claim that exemption and take those creditors. And we don't have an occupant, so it would pertain only to private property. So the fencing off of this with no trespass, public's not welcome into this area, still doesn't get us there. and some of the stuff and I understand that I've never gotten a call in my station I got the sock rapid station I do have some treatment ponds in my station but I've never gotten a call but I understand that they can dig through liners okay and that causes the damage that's that's a problem or maybe in some of the berms so we need to do something um, I would say that probably the first and best option is to give permission to a local trapper. Um, during season, so remember uh, end of October through the end of February, that's when they're in season. Them go. That's okay. Why I recommend that is because there's value to the fur. That's why we have the season then, is because the fur is prime and there's some value to it. So let's have somebody use that. Um, now the market for market fluctuates uh, maybe seven dollars a rat this year. Two years ago, top lot rat muskrats were fetching forty-four dollars a piece. Okay, now that's a top lot rat, so that's a pretty special muskrat, super nice, perfect, no damage, very prime. But when fur prices are up. Um, it's not going to be hard to find a trapper that's willing to come in for free and trap your muskrats up. And they're, they're going to be knocking on your door, I want to get in there if you've got muskrats with a trap. 
All you need to do is get permission from your employer, the city, the county, the state, whoever, and say, we got a problem, it's trapping season, muskrats are in season, can we give permission to a local trapper to come in and trap them all? That's probably the best solution. There's not gonna be, there's probably little to no expense involved. The trapper most likely would be willing to come in for free, trap them all out. Um, I saw a hand up, a question. What's the penalty for taking them out of season? Generally, a ticket for 187. Take them out of season 187. When I come across someone that takes a critter out of season, typically what they took them with is subject to seizure and confiscation. So if I shoot a deer out of season, game warden comes in, writes a ticket, probably get revoked for your hunting privileges and you lose the fire. Okay, muskrat, probably not. I'm not going to seize a fire for that, but to answer your question, 187. But you'd have to have a lot of $7 muskrats to pay for a That's a lot. <laughs> right. Another question. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're at the first option. Okay. Yep. I'm thinking a little bit ahead. Will the ticket go to the mayor? You can because try it. The question is, can the ticket go to the mayor? I'm working for the city. <laughs> You know, you can try to talk me into it. If you're working under your direction. I got his name and address. You got something to put on there? You can talk about it. <clears throat> okay. Um, so, again, in season, there's value, no expense to the city, get them all. Okay, next, next slide. So, now we're getting into some other issues. Okay, so. Maybe it's closed season. Um, it's not. It's not that late October to early or to the end of February, and we got a problem. It sure happens. It, it certainly could. We do have trappers in the state that are kind of considered animal controllers. So they're a trapper that uh, maybe is working with a, a wildlife manager and. They themselves can be permitted to handle nuisance critters. Um, typically, a permit is given for a location. So, if I got a problem at this pond and I need a permit, I'm going to give the permit to allow this activity in this pond. We do have the trappers that already have the permit in hand. So it's not specific to a location, it's specific to an activity. So we're allowing the trapper to report to the CO and say, we've got a problem here, I'm going to go in under my permit, my general permit, and I'm going to trap these out to the city or whomever. The wildlife manager or a conservation officer in your area should know who the animal controllers are. Put a call into them, they can put you in contact with an animal controller. Probably going to be some expense involved because now we are out of season. And the trapper coming in is not going to be able to use the fur. The fur is either not prying, um, well, it's not going to be prying if it's out of season, and they're not allowed to possess it. Most of the permits require, and this is the same for nuisance beaver, I guess that's the other big one, nuisance beaver, but you can't possess the critter because they're not in season, so they need to be buried on site. There's no transportation of them allowed. So we could go with the animal controller option. Next slide. The other one is contacting the DNR wildlife for a permit. Okay, so the city can say, you know, we got a problem. The rats are doing some damage. 
I can show that. If someone comes out, I can say, yep, yeah, here's, the, here's their tunneling, here's the damage, they, you know, they chewed into this liner. They're not in season, so we can't get a trapper in here for free. It's out of season. And we have a city employee that knows how to trap muskrats. Contact wildlife, get the permit, have the permit issued to the employee, done. Okay, conditions are set on the permit, the employee can come in and take care of it. So that would be an, uh, an example that we would use for closed season. So we do need a permit. Is there a cost for that permit? Permits are free. Okay. Okay, so no expense involved. Um, the city could probably save some money than paying for a trapper to have an employee do it. That's a workable solution. Okay. Um, that's the law that talks about that that requires the state or allows the state to issue the special permit. Um, most of you know probably where your DNR wildlife office is. There's a DNR wildlife manager and an assistant wildlife manager. Go ahead. And you can get on the DNR website and there's an interactive map that you can look at to see where your closest um, wildlife office is. So this would be an example of a uh, special use temporary permit. This is, this is what the wildlife office would give you. Okay? Has the trapper's name. With that permit, that's an issue? As a condition of repeat, that permit. Repeat the question, please. Okay, the question is, can we shoot them under that permit? And the answer is yes. If the wildlife manager agrees that that is um, one of the conditions, then you're okay. I don't see a problem with that. I still don't see a need for the for the OT6 out there. <laughs> but if you want to play them with a 22 out of season. <laughs> <laughs> you might. Okay, let me think of that. See, you guys think ahead. Um, but that goes back to the high powered rifle question in the beginning. But um, so it talks about it, it's to the trapper, it's got a beginning and an end date. Sometimes they have how many you can take. I can't see a, really where that would pertain, that they would probably allow you to take as many as you need to to get them out of there. Um, it can be rescinded at any time. One thing you need to think about is. Some cities don't allow trapping in their city. And this permit would not override that. A city has the right to be more restrictive than state law. So if the city says no trapping, you're going to have to figure out another solution. Or no shooting, maybe, in the city limit. I don't know. What if a city resides in a game refuge that doesn't allow the taking of Okay. This special use permit would still allow that. Still, uh, yep, that would override the. Please the repeat the question. The, the question was so now I've got this area, this pond in the city, and we happen to be in the um, game refuge. Okay, St. Cloud, a good portion of St. Cloud is in a state game refuge. However, this permit would override that and allow the taking of it. If now, wildlife office, obviously, business hours during the week. Contact them, set it up, get the permit. I was thinking about this, and you know, maybe what if you have something that's urgent? So you come out, someone's out doing something on Saturday, and I, I can see they burrow right in, and now there's something leaking. You can always call the CO. I can authorize that, I would say, by phone. If you called me and said, hey, uh, we got a problem out here and we need to take care of it right now. Call your local CO, maybe they come out, take a look at it, and say go ahead and do it. I will follow up with the wildlife manager, let them know what's going on. And I mean, we kind of want everybody on the same page, but I understand that if, if we have something urgent, we got something urgent, we got to take care of it. Hold on. No, I understand. And that's why we should be allowing trappers to probably pick them clean every fall. Okay, let's get them out so they can't establish a colony. Um, 
I'm going to say that we need to, if we're going to take them out of season, I guess what is damage to? Tony, yeah. the, the one caveat that everyone has in here in their, their permit with the PCA, okay. it says that if muskrats are, if you see them in your pond, you have to immediately remove them. You okay. guys agree? You read that in your permit? I wasn't aware of that. So the, the fact that they're there and could possibly do damage, you know, that's, that's kind of the, the sticky wick. Okay. And let me ask you this. Do you have a way to contact the entire group if I get that answer and get it back to you? Absolutely. Okay, maybe that's what we'll do. I don't know. I don't know how the PCA, they would need something in law to say that we override that law. You know what I mean? We, 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 they, we can't just arbitrarily say, ah, that law doesn't pertain to you and you can't, you can do whatever you want. So we're going to have to probably get together with PCA and figure that out. I didn't know what that, that was stated in the door. I got a report from a monthly check. Okay. That's just part of the permit. The question I was. I wasn't aware of that. I guess I, I had I known that, I would have looked that one up and figured that out. Recordings, it's like a You know, this everything I'm telling you is the state law. I don't know what law they're referring to that would allow someone to take them out of season without a permit. Well, I just thought it was okay to take. Yeah. They, you know, they don't want them to say they can't be there. I hear you. I understand. I mean, you're in a in the PCA is a state agency, so if the state agency is telling you to do it, I got another state agency saying not to do it. Striped gophers are unprotected. So you can shoot them? Yeah, they, 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 yep. they do not fall under the protected law. Like okay, so I will report that answer back to Jeff, and he can get that out to the group as far as how, how we're going to follow that. I've got a question on goose hunting, okay. duck hunting. What is the penalty for somebody if they get caught? over the fence and they've shot geese and they're out there to retrieve the geese. What, okay. what is the penalty? It, it really varies. There's a lot of discretion by the CO to handle that. I mean, it's a trespass. Um, you know, something we, we can go a civil uh, penalty of 50 bucks or we can do a mandatory court, gross misdemeanor, you need to go see the judge. So there's a lot of leeway in there, you know, uh, a little civil ticket, uh, a trespass ticket. Um, the big one, you're going to see the judge, it's a gross misdemeanor. If you're having a problem, I think the most important thing is to make sure that the area is properly posted. It is. All sides okay? all the way around. Because I've run into this. Now, every county is a little bit different. The county attorney is the one that prosecutes. Okay? We make the case, hand it off to the county attorney, county attorney prosecutes. Counties vary a little bit on that stuff. I've had cases questioned because it's a city sign that says, um, you know, city of blah, 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 no trespassing, and it's on one of the corners of the pond. Was that legally posted? When the law states that it needs to be on all the corners of the property and any field drives in or out. So just like posting private property, let's cross the T dot the I and make sure that we are good with the posting requirement. But yeah, we're all about handling trespass stuff. If you've got hunters in there, you don't want hunters in there, we'll take care of it. Most disgusting is when they shoot the geese and live lake. Yeah, that's a lot of waste. That's a whole different issue. Well, they're not yeah. going to eat them if you have a taste of them. <laughs> <laughs> lots of bacon. Lots and lots of bacon. Okay, guys, I think what we're going to do here is Tony will be around a little bit. Yeah, I'll be around. Well, so we can get Lance his time up here. He's gonna, he's gonna show you what he's done and the traps that he's gotten and kind of teach you a little bit how to trap the muskrats. I know we've learned that we're possibly gonna be able to shoot them, but one thing Lance is gonna show you is that you think 
that you're seeing all the muskrats you have in your pond, and he's got a great story for you. All right, you guys all have ponds for 80% of you have ponds, right? Everybody raise your hand that has ponds again. How many of you have ever seen a muskrat in your pond? About 80%. Um, I had a fellow operator come to me and he said, uh, I think my mower saw a, the mower guy saw a muskrat in his pond. Can you come out? I went out there, I took three colony traps there, and in three days we got 96 muskrats. <laughs> 96. But he only saw one. And he only saw one muskrat. So what you're seeing out there is a very minimal amount of what's going on in your ponds. Did you have a um, uh, it was a burning ball. It was a burning season. The question was, did, he, did you have a permit? <laughs> so, did, I have video and stuff. Oh, he got it up. Uh, yeah, go ahead and play this video, and then I'll, we'll talk some more. That's what you're going to see in your pond dikes. I'm sure you've all seen that. If you pay any kind of attention, you'll, you'll pick those runs out. Look for those on a still day. Go out there when your water's clear, you're in the middle of your discharge, about half down, and you'll see mud. You'll see muddy banks along the shore. That's where they're digging, that's where they're moving. Look for those runs. He's going to show you the conibear there. That's good for one muskrat. This will get you up to nine in one night. Okay? What do you use for bait? You don't. There's absolutely no bait to this trap. A muskrat is used to swimming in the dark, through the water, they follow a trail, and uh, you just put that in their run, and they'll come swimming along there, they just, they move with their whiskers. They feel with their whiskers, they don't have to see. And they bump into something, they're used to bumping into weeds, cattails, you know, anything. And they just push right through it. So what do they do? They go in. Door falls behind them. 90% of the time they'll grab up here and they suffocate and uh, you'll fill this trap so fully that you can't get them out. You'll have to disassemble the trap sometimes to get them out. I mean, cut it open if you've got a lot of rats. So he's showing you this, he's showing you this right here, the conveyor. It's really effective, but not nearly the same as this trap. Go get yourself one of these and you can eliminate your problem in just a couple of days. Let's set that trap and pass it around. <laughs> so, you can stay by that. Otherwise, oh, okay, here we go. There's typical control structure, right? You guys, most of you have that, I'm sure. Um, when it's frozen, look in there. Next slide. You'll, right there is the uh, entrance in and out of the control structure. They always pile up a little grass on there or whatnot. You can hit them with a regular throwback trap in there too, but once again, you're only getting one. Uh, go ahead, next one. There's some problems. There's a picture of my bag right there, and I'm a trapper. Uh, they come in and once they find your pond, they go crazy. Um, yep, there's be three pictures, I think, of that. Keep going. My nice arrows in the snow. See that? Okay, <laughs> next one. Uh, where I'm from, the ditches can actually be, the water table in the ditches can actually be higher than in the, in the field. Okay? So farmers hate muskrats too. Uh, that is not actually a muskrat damage, that's a tile blowout, but that's the start, because you never see, after muskrat digs through the dike, it blows out when the water's high, and you don't see the, the, where initially the damage happened. Okay, next, again. There's some muddy water in the trails. That is not a wastewater pond, obviously, with cattails in it, but um, 
You set that in any one of those trails or fill them all, and you'll be done with catching muskrats in one night. Uh, as soon as you get a first freeze, a really a half inch freeze or something, you can look for bubble trails. See those bubbles there? Muddy water bubble trails. Wherever they're going in and out of your burn, they're going to leave bubbles. It comes off their back, floats to the surface. There's some more bubble trails. Keep going. There's another run in, uh, den entrance. Okay. There's another den entrance with a rat in it. That's a conger set, though. Okay. Okay, there's a colony. That's just real common to catch that many, three, four, and next one. Now, that's what I'm talking about there. <laughs> Right? You guys, if you want to get rid of them, you like to see that, wouldn't you? Okay, next. That is one day's catch at that pond that I first talked about at the... Uh, during season. Oh, during during season. season. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Lance, ask, ask them which is the primary or secondary that they see most of the rats in. Good question. Uh, in your, in your guys' pond systems, do you see more in your primary ponds or your secondary ponds? Secondary, secondary ponds? <laughs> All over. For me, it's my it's my primaries. Uh, you raise your hands. How many on secondaries? I'm curious. I'm curious. And primaries? Huh. I'm on the minority there. Where do you get these traps? Uh, you can get them. Question was. The question was where do you get these traps? Um, they're just called a colony trap. You can get them collapsible, so you can break them down and take up a lot less room. Um, but F and T. Cumberland Supply, People just just Google uh, trapping supplies and they'll bring you out a bunch. Minnesota trap line is another yeah Minnesota trap line F and T trap line that's what I'm wearing here. And you have to stake it down? Nope. The question was, do you have to stake it down? Yeah, no staking involved. Just set that baby in the run and you got it. Um, I have one little short video yet. I think it's video two. I hope. It, all this is to show you is how a muskrat moves. It's it, it shows a muskrat being caught. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. Yep, here it is. It's in about 15 seconds. You'll see a rat swim through that kind of a trap. But if you have this this trap in there, you'll get them too. But just watch how they move through there. It's they're a fast swimmer. Whatever they bump into, they're used to plowing through. Um, Boom. You, for one second you see him, the next second, I mean, you don't see him, and the next second he's through. So they swim fast. I'm done. Yeah. All right. That's uh, all the info I can give you guys, unless you have some more questions for me. I was going to mention that muskrats are probably one of the easiest critters to trap. So if an employee maybe has not not real experienced trapper, but you want to try it and get a license and try it in the fall, you're probably one of the easiest. You know, colony or con bear. Um, some of the footholds are a little more about placement, but you can't go wrong with a colony trap. Anybody got a question? I'll bring the mic over to him. For Tony while he's still here. that night where did all the rats come out that one day what was it how much damage was done to that dike with all the rats in it there was about uh, about six runs in that dike and they were well defined i mean we're talking 18 inches deep so the main one was 18 inches deep it was it was a disaster Anybody else have a question? This is your chance. Got one more question here. Any tips on trapping beavers? He asked if I had any tips on trapping beaver. Um, I've caught a few beaver, but I am not a beaver uh, trapper by heart. Um, they're basically a big muskrat. Find where they're chewing. Where they're coming. Where they're coming in and out of the water. They're chewing and. Set up a 3.30 con bear with a little bit of um, like sweet water flat tail that's a, uh, uh, a caster scent. 
you put that right on the mud bank, right out in front of that 330 and it's, I mean, that's almost a surefire to, to get them out of there. Um, that seems to work every time. If, you, if someone knows, uh, who said caster? So you're a beaver trapper, any other ideas? I mean, that's kind of the standard surefire beaver set, I think. There's going to be dens and runs for beavers also. They'll have just bigger runs to put it in. But uh, you can screw up a beaver a lot more than you can a muskrat. Um, so if you don't know what you're doing, you're the best off by someone that does. Because once you make a beaver trap shy, you're going to have a heck of a lot more problems on your hands. And then you will be paying some of the reason for you if it is you actually know, causing it. And, and beaver, as he said, trap shy. They educate very fast. So if you set a beaver trap and you miss the beaver, that beaver is educated and will be much harder to catch. Unlike a muskrat that if you miss them, they'll come back an hour later you'll get them. So beavers are pretty smart. One thing if you guys are looking for trappers to come help you out, the Minnesota Trappers Association has a website, it's mntrappers.org. And if you go on there, there's uh, once you once you start over again, so the whole group can hear you. If you guys are looking for trappers to help you out, the Minnesota Trappers Association has a website, and I believe it's mntrappers.org. And on there, there's directors for I think it's eight different parts of the state that you know should be somewhere close to you. You can give them a call and tell them what your problems are, and. Most likely they have a list of trappers, you know, in your immediate area that could help you, that you could at least call and ask them if they would come come help you during fur season. You know, they may have a charge or something to that effect, but, you know, if it's a permit situation. And with the permits that the DNR issues to regular trappers, I've had several myself, and, and it really is an easy process. I mean, most of the time the fair. Let's say half the time it's a verbal, then I get the permit in hand, so they allow me to start ahead of time. So. Good. Let's give these guys a round. Eh?